This is another new electric car that we are test driving today. Electric cars are just coming to Malaysia, I'd say by the week. Yes, not so much. Almost feels like new brands are coming in by the week. <laughs> yes. Uh, we already have uh, 12 new electric car brands. Yeah. Uh, my last video, I said 11. Now we've got 12. Uh, recent one was, of course, a pickup truck. And now, this is not a new brand, but a new model electric car. And I'm covering up the logo because I want to, I want to see the people viewing this video, the first minute or so, can they guess what we're driving? Because this looks very, very familiar. This whole cabin experience looks very familiar. You know, the, the where the power button is to ignite the uh, battery system, uh, the steering wheel design, the stock controls. Yeah. And this familiar Nano EX. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. yes. You see one look at this, you know which premium car you're in. Yeah. So this, yes, right word, premium electric car. So I'm going to remove my hand right now so that you all can get a chance to absorb more. It's Lexus. Now, Toyota has an electric car called the BZ4X, but this is the Lexus 450E. RZ 450E. Lexus RZ 450E, which means it's about the same as the BZ4X? It's actually the same chassis. Okay, same uh, chassis, but it looks so much nicer. Yes, everything on top is all their own yeah. design. You know, I like the way the BZ4 looked when I saw it. I like the way it looked, the design, very futuristic, but not over the top. But when I saw this, I said, hey, they've done an even better job with the Lexus version. And when you get inside, uh, you know, the BZ4X seemed a little bit too far forward for me, for my age group. But when I look at this, this is just like a normal Lexus RX interior, which is very familiar. And I have to say, starting from the screen, I love the fact that it's, okay, we like large screens, yes, but it's flushed on the dashboard. Yeah. It's not sitting out there. It doesn't have any fan fancy gimmicks on it. Yeah. Straightforward, right there, large enough to see. And you got physical buttons. Yeah. Important functions like this got physical function, volume. Aircon, yeah. the mister. And persistent aircon controls. No matter yes. what you're doing up here, this the aircon means. controls are always there. Yeah. This is all very important because why? When we're driving in traffic like this, this is purposely why I came out right now in traffic. You don't have to look down to work your volume in your aircon. Yeah. I'm looking, I'm still looking up. Where else? If I had to work it in the screen, I have to look at the screen. Correct. And this is what I think a lot of New car manufacturers, especially electric car manufacturers, coming from China, seem to not get it. You know, they don't get it. Yeah. I've been watching YouTube videos from people in my industry, simply because, not that I'm watching them to watch them, but, you know, people show me, hey, brother, I saw this video. Huh? What do you think of this car? And then they show me, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a competitor. And they all say, wow, we love the the screen or we can do everything on the screen but when I meet them in person they tell me a totally different story yeah so now I realize that nearly everybody in our industry is not in favor of this I control everything on the screen like side view mirror aircon you see I, I want to be able to do this if suddenly I feel that I want a bit of aircon on my face I can just do this and have it facing me I don't go into the screen to operate it. Yeah. You know, then I can put it back where I want to put it back. Correct. Right. You know? This is all... Uh, the, the problem is, I think, premium has been co-opted by the tech segment. So You're right. Everybody thinks that for a product to be premium, it must be very, very high tech. Without thinking about the reality that the car industry has learned a lot of lessons over the years about where to put physical buttons, which controls have to go where, and I think the prime example of a brand that has mastered, mastered this art is Lexus. Yes. So when you go in here, you see all the same familiar controls exactly where you want it. These are things that, as an owner of an electric vehicle, every day you're driving in, it's things that you shouldn't have to think about. Correct. And when you have everything in the screen, you have to think about it every single time. Yes. And when you have someone new driving the car, 
like say a family member who's not familiar with the car, say you have a few family members and all drive their own cars, when they get into your car, they got to learn everything. Yeah. With something like this, you don't actually have to learn it. Okay. You know, for your for your major functions. And what are major functions? Air conditioning, volume control, aircon vent control, side view mirror right here on the door panel. Easy to use. What is so difficult about having this on the door panel like everybody else? Why do you need to control it with, you know, some 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 screen function? And then, you know, when you go into the screen function, you have to go into so many layers. Yeah. Which I find really irritating because I'm an old man, like you know, this layer system all high yeah, yeah. headache and like confusing. Actually, if you think about it from the point of view of the manufacturers, the newer manufacturers, for them they want to simplify production as much yes. as possible. So the fewer buttons they put in, the lower the complication it is for them to produce the car. Yes. So also actually, lower cost. Lower cost also. So for them, actually they want to push you in this direction of more screen, more screen, more screen. Because it actually reduces their cost. Mm. Whereas when you put buttons at this, you got to buy all the switches. You got to make sure yes. everything is calibrated, each QC and all that. Yes, and everything has to be connected. Yeah, but come on, lah, aircon vent, <laughs> yeah. lah. The me... most basic. Thing. This one is just one small lever, lah. Yeah. You have to put wiring behind, motor system, everything, and then that's something to go wrong in the future, you know. Correct. This one, uh, at the most, as well, after fifteen years, uh, one might crack, you know, yeah. and then one might get out of shape. That's about it. You know? And you'll still be able to use it when it's broken. Exactly, broken. exactly. Like my some of my old cars, I still can, you know. Yeah. Sort of make it work, lah. Put some cellophane tape, lah. Like, yeah. Put a super glue inside. Yeah, <laughs> but if it's if it's controlled by a screen, you can't yeah. you can't fix it. After your fifth year of uh, ownership, when the warranty is over, you'll be thinking, should I replace this for two thousand ringgit? Correct. Or put that towards my deposit for my next car. That's all little things to pressure you to keep buying new cars every five years yes. on the yeah. modern cars. This is the problem, and it will not go away. Unless you buy something like this, where they still have physical, yeah. But controls. you know, this is a four hundred and thirty thousand ringgit electric car. So of course, some of you will raise your eyebrows and say four hundred and thirty thousand. But remember, the petrol-powered Lexus RX. Mm. How much is that? That's around four fifty or something. Exactly. So you're getting an electric car. What's 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 the details on this car? Can you share with me like the battery specs and everything else? So this one has uh, all-wheel drive system. Okay. Uh, direct four, I think they call it. Uh, the front motor and the back motor are a little bit different power output. Okay. But all together, you get about three hundred and thirteen PS. Okay. Three hundred and thirteen horsepower. Right? Yes. So actually, for a Lexus vehicle, <laughs> even though the RX is close to this in pricing, this has a lot more horsepower. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Battery driving distance? Uh, about 430, 450 mm. kilometers. You can stretch it a little bit, okay. but um, it's the, about it's about everybody else, lah. Ah, it's a it's about that, lah. It's the bare minimum, I would say. 400 kilometers is the bare minimum, okay. and this is a little bit more than that. And I noticed the Japanese when they give you a figure, they're quite conservative. Correct, because the Japanese keep consistent with the use of WLTP nowadays. Okay. Whereas with the Chinese manufacturers, one will use NEDC, one will use CLTC. Yes. And all of this, you, all of those uh, standards, you have to plus minus a little bit. Correct. Usually you have to, you have to minus off about twenty percent. Yeah. I, I've I've had to minus quite a bit in, on some of the electric cars because when I got the car, the 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 range was very impressive as as, as advertised by them. Yeah. But as I kept driving, I noticed hey the advertisement is uh, <laughs> not being followed, you know, and yeah by sometimes even more than 20%. And some people will say, oh, you know, you're driving fast, you're being ridiculous. We don't do the Genting run. We don't do the Bukit Tinggi run. We just drive around the city like how we're driving now. What a normal person will be doing daily with their petrol car or diesel car or electric car is what we feel is the best way to test drive a vehicle to share the impression with everybody, Yeah, you know? So like now when we drive this, what is important? It drives like a normal Lexus. Mm. It's comfortable, it absorbs the bumps nicely, it's got nice firm braking. Yes, it's got good acceleration, but I'm not interested in how fast it'll accelerate because I think something like this is just, you know, the first week when you buy, you play with it. Yeah. After that, you don't want to suck so much power out. You don't, you don't need to. Yeah. Yeah. Just drive it normally. And it doesn't have that absurd amount of supercar level of power. Correct. Which is completely unnecessary. And dangerous. And dangerous. And you know, a lot of the EV manufacturers are just giving it for 200,000 ringgit. Correct. To an audience that is not prepared for that kind of power. Yes. And if, if you happen to get someone who says, oh, can I test drive your car? Or, you know, uh, uh, 
a young adult in your family who says, oh, I want to take your car a little while. They will be overwhelmed yeah. with that kind of power delivery. You know, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. And that's why I think I've, I've started to see some electric cars having fender benders on and then being you know taken away on tow trucks and, and flat, flat bits. Because I think some people have not absorbed that kind of power easily. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. They, they are basically... Those kind of cars don't teach you how to drive at all. Yes. yes. <laughs> they just teach you how to have a short amount of fun and then... When the corner comes, you have to leave it to the electronics. Yes, yes. I mean, they've got great electronics, great safety features, but come on, you don't need that much power. You really don't. Yeah. This car has just the right amount of power. Actually, anything more than 300 horsepower, I think, is not safe for public roads. <laughs> Unless you are a really well-trained driver. Exactly. Or you're driving a supercar yeah. because you wanted to buy a supercar. Yeah. All these electric cars now have supercar performance, but they're crossovers and SUVs and big, and they're big and wide. Because of the battery packs, they're all big and wide. This one is about the right size, you know? Like a little bit bigger than your typical C-segment uh, crossover. Yes. But not that gigantic D-segment uh, SUV Correct. size. Correct. Yeah. And because its package is a little bit more different from your typical ICE uh, vehicle, you actually have a good amount of usable room. Mm. Like I'm looking at MD at the back there. You've got tons of legroom. Yes, that's the beauty of electric cars. Yeah. Legroom at the back is always more than adequate. Yes. It almost feels bigger than the RX at the back. Yes, because the battery pack is sitting flat down there and you don't yeah. have the drive frame. Yeah. 